Dozens of people have been injured in northern Kosovo, where police and NATO-led peacekeepers have clashed with ethnic Serbs, the majority in the country's north. They've been demanding the removal of recently elected ethnic Albanian mayors in ethnic Serb majority areas. NATO says around 25 peacekeepers have been wounded in unprovoked attacks. The unrest is focused around several towns in the north. Tensions have been rising since the mayors took office last week. NATO peacekeepers and Kosovo police pulled injured officers to safety as protests spun out of control. The chaos came after ethnic Serbs demonstrating in Zvechan refused to move for Kosovo special police vehicles. Peacekeeper soldiers used tear gas and stun grenades to clear the protesters, who responded by throwing rocks, bottles and even explosives. Cars were also set alight as demonstrators demanded the removal of ethnic Albanian officials from local office. Ethnic Serb demonstrators also want special police to leave the area. Special police currently deployed inside and outside the municipal building should withdraw with their armoured vehicles. This is a city municipality, not a police station. In Leposovic, peacekeeping troops placed barbed wire around the town hall to protect it from hundreds of angry protesters. The clashes are the latest in a string of incidents which have added to growing regional tensions, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned of an eruption in the Balkans. A big explosion is brewing in the centre of Europe, in the very place where in 1999 NATO carried out aggression against Yugoslavia. The situation is alarming, but the West has set a course for the total subjugation of everyone who expresses their own opinion. Neighbouring Serbia has now put its military on high alert. Kosovo declared independence from Belgrade in 2008, but Belgrade refuses to recognise Kosovo's sovereignty. The US and EU are now stepping up efforts to resolve the dispute, fearing further instability as Russia's war rages in Ukraine. And I'm joined now by Florian Bieber. He's a professor of Southeast European history and politics at the University of Graz. Welcome to DW. Now, the conflict between ethnic Serbs and Kosovo Albanians is deeply rooted in the past. Why do tensions persist to this day and what exactly triggered this new violence? Well, I mean, the core uh, reason overall is, of course, that Serbia still does not recognize Kosovo's independence and has a strong control over the Serb community in the north of Kosovo through its political party and power structures. Now, the particular trigger now is that Serbs walked out of Kosovo institutions at the end of last year over a nameplate disputes, um, and they haven't returned. Now, in response, Kosovo organized elections, but they were boycotted by most Serbs. So the mayors elected in the northern municipalities are Albanians and don't represent the local community. So many Serbs are understandably uh, kind of alienated by those mayors. Uh, but of course, on the other side, it's been from Belgrade's side that this boycott has been instigated um, against uh, in these elections. And so there's really no credible authority in those municipalities at the moment. And when Pristina, when the, when the authorities of Kosovo tried to install those mayors, we've seen this violence, which to some degree seems to be locally grown and to some degree seems to be also provoked and encouraged by Belgrade. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the role that the Serbian president, Aleksandr Vucic, is playing here, because he is performing a delicate balancing act between appeasing hardline nationalist supporters at home and courting the EU. He has now warned that his military won't stand by, and those are his words, if um, Serbs are um, attacked in Kosovo. What role does the Serb minority in Kosovo play in Serbian domestic politics? Well, 
It doesn't play any role uh, itself. It's too small. Um, but the issue is that Vucic is using them uh, basically as a leverage in Kosovo, uh, abusing them, but also keeping the Kosovo issue open, uh, raising tensions uh, there very often for his own domestic politics. So it's not that he is, you know, the balancing act is part of his performance, is part of his show. He is neither committed to join the European Union, nor is he pursuing any other policy besides keeping himself in power. And he's faced some of the most serious pro protests uh, since his term in office in recent days. So the incidents in Kosovo are indeed quite useful for him because he can distract from domestic criticism by pointing towards Kosovo. How likely do you think it is that this violence will spiral out of control? Well, let's keep in mind, Kosovo has a NATO-led uh, peacekeeping operation of whom many were injured today, tragically, which is one of the serious, most serious incidents we've seen in many years. But that's very clear that if Serbia were to cross the border into Kosovo, those troops would be there. Um, and that would be basically a conflict between Serbia and NATO. And I think nobody is imagining this at the moment. So when he says he's not going to stand by, this is mostly idle talk, which he likes to do. Um, but, you know, he really can't afford an open confrontation with NATO at this particular juncture. That was Florian Bieber in Graz. Thank you so much for your analysis. Thank you.